welcome once more for uh, coming to worship God. And as we worship God together, we remember those who fought and died for our country in order to secure our freedom. Someone said, we don't know them all. Those who died, we don't know them all. Some we do, maybe some we fought together. Some of us here are military people, personnel before, and you, we fought side by side and our friends died. But we don't know them all, but we owe them all. We owe them all. And for our service this morning, we also owe Jesus Christ our all, because he died for us. So let's listen to what the scripture has to say. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Let's pray. Father, as we gather to worship you, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Christ's name, amen. If you're able to, please stand as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. It's always been, I hear the sound of the amplified voices singing more than the congregation. Today, I heard you singing. So we thank God for that. Let's bow our heads and pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise. O oh God, you created us in love. Create us anew in love as we worship you this morning. O oh Jesus Christ, you redeemed this world in love. We pray that you would reclaim our hearts as you, we worship you th this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, you move in this world 
you move this world as well towards what God has appointed. So move within our hearts as we worship you this morning. In Christ's name, amen. We will sing again, and this song is one of uh, my favorite. It's called Living Hope. We have sang this before. If you're able to, please rise as we sing Living Hope. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness poured through the shadow of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped out from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus Christ is the
Let's bow our heads and pray and ask God to illumine our hearts as we prepare to listen to his word read and preached to us. Holy God, you, re you revealed to the disciples the everlasting glory of Jesus Christ. Grant us who have not seen and yet believe the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may boldly live the gospel and shine with your transforming glory as people change and is changing through the redeeming presence of our Savior, in whose name we pray, amen. John 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleasures. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then would you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Richard. Well, the passage that we read this morning is a very familiar one. You have heard many sermons on this passage. Maybe you yourself had taught this passage or have quoted John 3.16 to many people. However, we are going to take a look at being born of the Holy Spirit. Today, what we're going to do is, John 3.16 is like a beautiful glowing diamond. And we are going to set it, put it on its setting. And uh, like a ring, an engagement ring, we're going to set it onto that ring. This is the purpose of our message this morning. So bear with me. Slide one says, well, Jesus said, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And Jesus qualified this being born again as being born of the Spirit. 
There is a word that I'd like to introduce to you, and it's called aphasia. What is aphasia? Aphasia is a communication disorder, the next slide please, uh, a communication disorder that makes it hard for a person to use words. It can affect his speech or writing or the ability to understand language. Sometimes it is caused by a stroke or a head injury or a brain tumor and the main treatment of which would be speech therapy. So aphasia affects a lot of people who have these uh, a stroke or head injury or brain tumor. However, we're not going to take a look at aphasia as a physical ailment, but a spiritual aphasia. Spiritual aphasia, the next slide please, is a spiritual communication disorder that makes it hard for us as human beings to understand the language of the Spirit. Nicodemus is a case in point. He is a Pharisee, meaning he is very devout, a member of the Jewish ruling council, meaning he's part of the Sanhedrin, the 70 elders. He came to Jesus at night for a chat. Even though he is a religious person and a religious leader, he was unable to understand what Jesus was talking about. Jesus told him that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they be born again. Nicodemus asked, how can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus ex explained to Nicodemus and said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm telling you from something that is known and I'm taking you to something that is unknown. And the analogy of the wind, remember that the spirit, the, name, the word spirit itself we studied last week is actually wind or breath. So Jesus said, wind will blow anywhere it wants to. You can't see the wind, but you know its effect. So is it with the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Spirit, but you know the effects of the Spirit. But Nicodemus couldn't still get it. He was unable to get it. And the question is why? Why is there spiritual aphasia? 2 Corinthians, the next slide please, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 tells us that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Blinded the minds of people. The world, the evil one in this world, blinds our eyes so that we cannot see what God is doing. Blind our minds so that we cannot understand what God is telling us. But allow me to introduce, not introduce, but to recall another word, word, an archaic word that was, that's used in the King James Bible, and we don't use it anymore today. And the word is quicken. Next slide, please. What is quicken? It is to vitalize, to make alive, and to give life. And the Bible in the old, in the old King James tells us that the Holy Spirit quickens us, makes us alive. And it is a wonderful word, but we don't use it anymore. John 6, 63, Jesus said, the Spirit, next slide please, the Spirit gives life, or the Spirit quickens us. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and 
the Spirit. This is in verse 8. So anyone, uh, so, well, Jesus says, so, so it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit, has life. And Demas was not able to understand this. Let me quickly bring you to what happened when the Holy Spirit quickens us. I know that most of us have been quickened, has been made alive in Christ. But let me remind you, and you can remind others as well, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and quickens us, what are the things that happen to us? There are seven in all. The first, slide 10 please, that we will receive new birth. And what is this new birth? It is through the power of the Holy Spirit, the quickening, the making alive of, through the power of the Spirit. Without the power of the Holy Spirit working in person, that person cannot be saved. No amount of religion or morality, no amount of any good work can save us. One must be born again in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I am being redundant here because I know that all of us know this. I'm just setting up the, the setting for our diamond. Titus 3, 5 says that we are saved not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of God's mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth, listen, rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Holy Spirit that we receive new birth. Last week we sang a song during Pentecost that the Spirit of God breathed into us. And that song, that new song, was sung by a mother who just given birth. And she, as she held her firstborn child, she looked at that child and said, I did not give life to this child. I just gave birth to this child. That life did not come from me. It came from God. And so she sang that the Spirit of God to breathe upon us. Holy Spirit, breath of God, breathe into us. Many of us are mothers here, and we have held our child in our arms, and we looked at them with pleasure but you did not give life to this child. It's the Spirit of God, the breath of God that breathed into this child to give birth. So is it with the Holy Spirit. And once we have new birth, then we, a little child learns to Walk. The little child learns to uh, roll. The little child learns to uh, do strange and funny things that delights the parents. And one of the most delighting part of a child, as in their growing process, is when the father heard the first dada, and the mother hears the first mama. And uh, the parents would say, see, the child is calling me. Because once you have life, this child starts to communicate. The next slide, please. 
starts to communicate. There is joy in communicating with God, in prayer, in fellowship with God. Because true prayer is impossible without the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that even when we are unable to, to know how to pray, the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer. Next slide, please. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, the Bible says. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through, the word, through wordless groan. See, without the Holy Spirit empowering us to pray, our prayers are simply a religious duty. Our prayer is simply a religious duty. It is when the pastor asks you, have you prayed? And then you say, uh, I think so. <laughs> True prayer is spontaneous, coming through the power of the Holy Spirit that, that brings our communication with God. And not only do we speak to God and ask God, we also listen to Him through His Word, the enlightening of God's word. And because God enlightens us, his word becomes alive in us. It becomes meaningful. It becomes a treasure. We value it. Healthy Christians will have a hunger for God's word. Like a baby searching for its mother's milk, a person born of the spirit will want to imbibe the word of God. 1 Peter 2.2 2 says, Little, uh, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Craving pure spiritual milk. And that would be the word of God. To under we cannot understand the word of God with our own intellect. We must have the help of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit understands, helps us in our understanding. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, so that you may understand. Paul describes the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of wisdom and revelation, unless the Spirit reveals the meaning of the scripture in our hearts, we cannot know it. And I've seen this over and over again. I'll share a scripture to one person and they said, no, nah, I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. But after a few months, they came back and said, now I understand. Now I understand what you're trying to say. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. To be born of the Spirit is to be able to grasp the import of the Scripture and to treasure it, to value it, to place it in our lives as we put ourselves under its authority and we love to study and we regurgitate it day and night. And the Scripture calls this regurgitation as to meditate on it day and night. Sometimes, sometimes we recall the Word of God in its pure form as we remember words and phrases in the Scripture. I don't know about you, many times I, I catch myself singing hymns. Have you ever done that? You would be singing hymns. The word of the hymns comes alive in your heart. And you sing it back to God. The word of God comes in many forms. So like newborn babies, we crave 
for the word of God, the pure milk. And when we do that, we start to grow and we are empowered to victory. Victory over sin. As parents, we celebrate when our little baby learned to stand on it their own and take their first step and uh, use the potty for themselves. Later on in life, parents gets their delight when they see their children making right choices, wise choices. The Bible commands us in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your life, uh, of your flesh. And in 1 Corinthians 5, 57 says, but thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, not our willpower, gives us victory. He is the spirit of victory over sin. The Bible tells us that Jesus lived a sinless life, even though he was tempted in every way that we are. How did he resist temptation? The Bible reveals the secret of Jesus' sinless perfection. He overcame through the spirit. And that is why, as I was preparing this message, a lot of songs came in. That is why little children sing, roll away, roll away, roll away. What? Every burden of my heart, roll away. Have you ever sang that? Oh. Ah, it says, roll away, roll away, roll away. Every burden of my heart, roll away. Roll away, roll away, roll away. Every burden of my heart, roll away. Every sin had to go neath the crimson flow. Hallelujah, roll away, roll away, roll away. Every burden of my heart, roll away. Hmm, this is a children's song. Yeah, interesting. Yes, our sins will roll away. When the Spirit of God comes upon us, we have victory over sin. And we are free to live for God. Memorial Day weekend we celebrate a time to remember those who have sacrificed their lives and died for us so that we can have this freedom in this country. It is also the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross that we are free, set free to live in the way we are meant to live for the glory of God. Have you ever visited a nation or a country that is not free? I have. As we were in the bus, the tourist guide says, do not take pictures. I am a tourist, and tourists have their cameras, and the first thing tourists want is to get a piece of their memory on film, right? <laughs> but I have been told, do not take pictures, because if you are caught, you will either land on jail, pay a hefty fine, and your camera will be confiscated. See, living in a free world, for us here in the United States, sometimes we take it for granted. And being free in Christ as well, many Christians take it for granted. Our next slide tells us, so if the Son of Man sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
And in Romans 8, 2, it says, Because through Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free. The only way to be free from sin habits, and these habits cling, cling on to us like super glue, is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. You might try professional counseling or medi medication or self-help programs, but if you want to be truly free in the spiritual realm, the way to go is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of us have sang this song, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. It was written by Charles Wesley. And the fourth stanza says, He, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, He breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoners free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. The power of God's new birth. It also empowers us to faith. Even if we have faith like a mustard seed we, that can move mountain, yes, we have confidence in God that we are loved, that we are strengthened. And Paul declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And not only that, when you have the Spirit in you and being born of the Spirit, you have renewed strength. Let me explain renewed strength in this way through an illustration. In China, there is a long river called the Yangtze River. And there is a bridge that crosses the Yangtze River in Shanghai called the Yangtze River Bridge. It's a national landmark in China. And it's always crowded with traffic with great, uh, over this great river, a hundred yards below, it, you know, it spans out and it's so high. And there are a lot of barges that are there. The bridge also has thousands of pedestrians that crosses it every day. And uh, it's not easy to spot someone who is trying to jump. Over a thousand people have jumped since the bridge opened in 1968. A man, however, who works on the bridge observed, it's a place that has a hundred percent success rate. Anyone who jumps dies. In 2003, Mr. Chen, in his mid-30s, became self, the self-appointed self guardian angel, coming to the bridge every weekend to try to stop people from jumping. He counts 42 people whom he has stopped from committing suicide, talking them down and wrestling with others. He has also had five people slip through his hands to their death. It was quite an extraordinary uh, person. It's a picture of a Christian who is an evangelist trying to save lives. And he said, if, a, if I save a person, it's already a lot. One is a lot. Now, <laughs> the journalist asked him, how can you identify a potential jumper from all these people that crosses the bridge? You know what he said? He said, oh, it's easy to recognize. A person who walks without spirit. A person who walks across this bridge without spirit. That is a potential jumper. How? 
how many people today walk the face of the earth with no spirit, the spirit of God. I don't know about you, maybe you are walking around without spirit, and you need the spirit of God to renew you. Today is a good day to renew the spirit work in your heart. And because we want to have this, this the Spirit of God living in us, how do we do that? How do we allow the Spirit of God to come to us and give new birth in our life, to renew our lives? Comes John 3, 16. For God so loved the world Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You have just set the diamond on its setting. Today we have the pandemic, and everyone is scared when you are tested positive, right? And God forbids that any one of us would be tested positive. But one thing that we need to be tested positive of is faith. You and I need to have to be tested positive on faith that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We need to have, to be tested positive. And we all need, we cannot have faith and be asymptomatic of faith. You and I should be tested positive on faith and be totally symptomatic of faith. And that is to be born of the Spirit. To be able to receive joy in prayer. To be able to understand how God deals with us. As we read the Bible, we enjoy and we treasure it. And as we lead our lives, that we find our lives to be powerful because of faith. To be rejuvenated because God gives us this strength, this renewal of strength. To be full of the symptoms of faith. Amen? Amen. How to trust God? Our next response song is Trusting God. It is a wonderful uh, hymn that I have been singing the entire week. I don't know why, but I've been singing this hymn the entire week, both in English and in Taiwanese, uh, because I grew up singing it in Taiwanese. If you're able to, please rise as we sing, Trust in God. I cannot fall. Draw 
trust in Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting Him whatever before, trusting Jesus, that is all. to be a praying people do not worry the Bible says about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ so let us lift up the names and circumstances of our prayer before God in, and let us lift our thanksgiving and praise as well and each time someone prays, let us respond by saying, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Father, your people pray before you. Bend your ears, O God, and listen to our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. The Patella family who is traveling, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, let our prayers be counted as fragrant aroma before your throne of grace. We lift them up before you. We wait for your answer in your time. And we trust that you will give us the best of answers. Let us continue to pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In our giving, as you exit through the double door or the side, you will find a small box that says Irvington Presbyterian Church. You could drop your offering there. We do not collect our offering because of the pandemic. And let us pray for the offering. 
Gracious God, we give our best, lest in gaining the world we lose our lives. As a covenant people, we seek to witness to your will and way. Help us to know you more clearly and that the wealth that you have entrusted to our care, may we use it wisely. And we contribute, O oh God, to your kingdom and to those who are in need. And we present ourselves as well as a living sacrifice before your throne and your altar. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. If you're able to, please rise as we sing the doxology together and remain standing for the closing prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. There is still a closing song that we are going to sing. It's called, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. If you're able to stand, you could stand. If not, please be seated. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold, my Savior will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overcome the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. 
Oh, the chains are released, I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. If you are able to continue standing, please do as we pray. Father in heaven, as we cut this music short, it says, with every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring us home. And day by day, we know that Jesus will renew us until we stand with joy before your throne, O God. To this we hold, our hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to him. When the race, O God, is complete, still our lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. God of all times and places, in Jesus Christ, lifted up on the cross, you opened for us the path to eternal life. Grant that we, being born again of water and the Spirit, may joyfully serve you in newness of life and faithfully walk in your holy ways through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Well, the announcement is that it's good to see you all and that we continue to have our Monday Bible study, women's Bible study, our regular Bible study, and Thursday night um, prayer meeting. And we also have our Friday evening um, Daniel plan. And I think Mustafa has his news of the community.